please welcome Jalil White to the show. <laughs> How's it going, guys? Oh my gosh. <laughs> How you doing? It is so, you know what, I have to say, I don't normally like talking about the way someone looks right off the top, but you just get more handsome at time. Oh, it's yeah. crazy. <laughs> no, it's true. <laughs> I mean, you really do. I, I got to tell you, congratulations on the podcast. What is it? You, you, how many episodes have you shot now? Ah, uh, shoot. We've done probably like about eight. I've done eight right now. Yeah. It's been, it's been it was great. It was, it was a little thing that just came along out of nowhere, really, uh, during a pandemic and quarantine when it started. And Brian Austin Green was my first guest. And I just thank everybody for, uh, for joining me on it. It is. I mean, this is an extra special moment in your time because today, 32 years ago, September 22nd, 1989, Family Matters premiered its first wow. episode. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> As a father, you know what I'm saying? I'm like, it's the second you have a kid, you, 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 it's like you can't remember anything that happened before <laughs> that. <laughs> I mean, but you, you, well, mostly you can't remember because you were a kid yourself. You started acting yeah. when you yeah. were like six or what, three. You were three years old when you yeah. started acting. Yes, three years old. How three did you get old. in the business? Were you from a show business family? What, how, did, how did it all start? No, my, um, I went to a, uh, a, a very unique preschool. Uh, it wasn't the best neighborhood, but this wonderful Asian lady named uh, Eva Lou, who has now it's been a lifelong um, uh, family associate, and she passed away recently. Mm. But uh, she thought I was a funny kid. She just thought I was a funny kid with a giant afro back in the late 70s. And uh, told my mom, this kid needs to be in commercials. And um, my mom gave it a shot. Um, I ended up going to an acting school. I don't know much you could teach in a kid at age three. I think it was more about sticking quarters in our hands and, and making us put them in the vending machine. Um, but um, <laughs> the old business, old fading business models, right? And um, um, and then after that, we uh, an agent came along and discovered me, and that agent happened to represent. The Olsen twins, uh, ah. Kirk Cameron, uh, Fred Savage, you name it. And really, I try to tell that to people also about the business. It is who you know. Um, Iris went on to become probably the most successful child agent of all time. Mm. And um, I happened to be one of her kids. And this little audition came along when I was 12 years old. So you I were a part of this group of, like, young child stars who all, like, just broke through. But how did you get the role of Steve Urkel? Do you remember the audition? Oh yeah, I remember the the, uh, the audition very well. The audition was, um, you know, uh, actually everybody was going out for the role of the kid that Laura wanted to take to the dance because that character was more likely to reoccur. Oh. Uh, but I but I had braces on my teeth, and when you had braces on your teeth back in 1989 or 1990, you didn't expect to get the job. Um, so. <laughs> When we saw the role for the nerd, I got excited. And I had a really simple rule, uh, Tamara, back then. Um, my parents told me anytime I booked a job, I could get whatever I wanted, just one thing of whatever I wanted. Oh. And if you think about that, that's genius, because how much was a kid going to spend back then with 200, 300 bucks? And then the rest goes into a, a fund for college. And that's all my mom really thought about. So all I wanted was a Sega Genesis. That's oh, it. Oh, Sega get, Genesis! If I get this, if I get this job, I get a Sega Genesis. I wasn't thinking about anything <laughs> past that, man. <laughs> and you got the job, you got the Sega oh. Genesis, and, I, and I, his... I, 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 I got a few Sega Genesis. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, but you have a 12-year-old Samaya. When you're yeah. talking with her about the 90s. Are you yeah. like the rest of us that you should have been there? You don't understand. It was amazing. <laughs> How do you describe the 90s uh -oh. to your daughter who's 12? You know how you describe the 90s to your daughter? You don't. That's how they that, do. You don't. They, they have very little respect for any of our technology. I try to show her a VCR. She's like, that's stupid. I try to show her a cassette. She took the ribbon and just the thread and just pulled it out. She said, this is stupid. I'm like, there's sound on that, baby. There, that, there's sound is carried on. <laughs> um, you know, that, you know, that generation, man, is just like, look, you, you know what you know. Yeah. And and, and like, I don't mean, look, I'm, I'm, I think, I don't know, you look a little younger than me, but I Please. think you may you may know that, you know, like there was a time when a damn microwave mattered, you know? Listen. And it was like, oh my gosh, I get madder that you could cook. My, my grandmama used to preheat the food 
Right. right. Then, well, what's all this new? Because I'm, I'm with that. your grandmother on that. But I'll tell you what. We were talking in the commercial break. I'm like, do you remember pagers? And you're calling oh. people like, 411, I have something to tell you. Or 911, yes. hurry up, call me. I mean, we literally walked around with pagers. So even though yes. technology is way more advanced with social media, we had a thing on our hip that right. somebody would not be looking at yeah. the little digits. I mean, oh, <laughs> it's amazing. Oh, yeah. Hey, listen, let's, 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 let's keep it a buck. You know, if a guy had a pager, he was either a drug dealer or a doctor. And we wanted him to figure it out quickly. <laughs> Jalil, <laughs> listen, I got to talk to you about the podcast because I do love the premise of it. Ever after where you interview um, the child stars of the past, Brian Austin Green, a lot of people that we just love so much and, and their journeys are incredible. I was intrigued and am intrigued by Melissa Joan Hart you had a rivalry with her. Uh, what? What? Why? How? You know, it was it it it, it was innocent. Um, Melissa's show was uh, Sabrina the Teenage Witch, and when her show came along, her show was owned by Disney. You don't understand business back then and how it's going to affect your life. I think that was actually probably one of the most profound things that happened to the show and to to my career at that time was Disney purchasing ABC. Ah. Um, because when Disney purchased ABC, they decided to make all of their property shows more of a priority. Ah, so, so you, you were pitted against each other by Hollywood, but you squashed the yeah. beef and your friends yeah. now. And oh, she yeah. was no, like, I, I love it. 